boots. Guggen boots, to be more specific. As much as I'd love to sit here and bore you all with how much I love these Guggen boots, I figured instead I'd share some feedback from my fellow peers. Funny enough, my, uh, my daughter actually loves wearing these boots all the time on and off the water, and she requested that I share a few of her words uh, and how she feels about these new boots that we're dropping today. Um, just pull this out. <clears throat> this is the most exquisite footwear my feet have ever been blessed with. I am a changed baby after slipping on the Guggen boots, and I now have more confidence to pursue my lifelong career as an elite series angler. Thank you, Guggen, and thank you for these boots. She's a pretty verbose baby. <clears throat> We've also been receiving some great praise from celebrities, matter of fact. Here's a, a picture of Billy Gates slipping on the Guggen boots, probably heading out from a Microsoft meeting of some sorts. He looks great in them. He also left us a review on the site because he was so pleased as to how these felt on his feet. DaBaby also dropped the review. Shout out to DaBaby. Really great guy, awesome individual. Um, along with that, some big names have been spotted wearing our new footwear. As you can see, this is kind of a big deal. If you want what's best for your feet on and off the water, protect your dogs, get some Guggen boots right now at guggensquad.com. Check the link down in the description below. And don't forget, use my code JohnB to save 10% off your entire order. Officially, day number one of the pond restoration. I'm feeling optimistic. This is an opportunity to rebuild something that was once great and that over time has just slowly deteriorated. But I got back from a trip late last night and uh, they're already starting to dig it out. I think we're already like 40 truckloads deep of just straight mud and clay. Well, the healing process has begun. These boys are working and cranking like crazy. There's five trucks working at a time. They're taking turns and going in intervals. As this excavator comes through, it's loading up one truck. Another truck will be behind it. That first truck will leave, dump it up somewhere to a different location. And then that second truck will come in and get the dirt as well. It's a really awesome process. When I first started this pond project, I, I feel like we kind of half-assed it. The guy that worked on it previously, a nice guy, cool dude, but I paid cheap. And to be honest, what this, this guy did was mostly pools. So I think what the issue was is when he first dug this out, he went a little bit too far in the clay and dug past the clay to the point where it was mostly just rock. And that was causing the extreme water loss that was occurring in the pond, which then resulted in most of my bass dying, which really sucks because as you guys know, in the previous videos, I had these bass like hand fed train. They were growing, they spawned, everything was looking good. I had, I had vegetation pads. And then here we are now, we have to start from scratch. The other amazing thing about this project too is we're not only fixing the pond, but we're gonna be expanding the pond as well. It started off as about, you know, like an eighth of an acre. We dug it out to the point where it's probably about a quarter of an acre. Now this pond is going to be a full acre large. This is gonna be a legit big bass factory. And while it sucks that, uh, you know, we have to start over and, and wipe the slate clean, this is also a blessing in disguise because we get to start over. I've learned what not to do. And these guys who are working the pond now do this like legitimately, they they go all over Texas and start from scratch. Yeah, but this is gonna be a multi-day project, obviously. It's not gonna happen overnight, but I will say just now, we've already moved so much freaking dirt, and in a matter of time, this is gonna be uh, you know, looking pretty good. The only thing we need to wait on, of course, is rain. But for now, we don't want rain because we wanna be able to design the bottom of the pond, put legitimate pea gravel in place, put legitimate areas for these bass to spawn, rather than going to Home Depot like we did last time and just chucking some gravel on the edge. We're, we're gonna do this 100% right. This is gonna be fully legitimate, and I'm very excited.
Riley was explaining to me that, um, you know, obviously while there's a cost on digging the pond out and creating the actual project, designing the pond and then improving upon what, uh, what has already been done, this right here is the most expensive part of this project. Oh, yeah. And it is for anyone right now, hauling, moving any sort of material, dirt, in this case it's dirt and clay. Obviously shout out to recent gas price increases. A lot of people weren't even doing this, right? They were saying, yeah. we're not gonna move your dirt for you because it's just, they didn't feel comfortable charging that much, but yeah. obviously they have to make money. So then they open up the opportunity to do this again. And it's been very, very expensive, but there's no, really no way around it. We've got to move so much dirt. And the thing is, is I've got a decent amount of land, eight acres, but there's nowhere to put the amount of dirt that we're using on my land. So we're having to take this, this clay in this mud and bring it to some other place, what, like 30 minutes away or something like that. Yeah, so no. I wanted to strike while the iron's hot. I didn't want to sit. I didn't want to sit and watch this pond deteriorate anymore, so I figured, screw it, we'll just do it now. Summer's a good time to do this because it's not going to be, you know, super rainy like it was in the spring. Day number two. The team is back at the pond and they're hard at work. Right now it's just the excavator doing most of the heavy lifting, digging soil and clay from the existing part of the pond and expanding it to make it bigger. Looking back, I wish I would have done this a little bit differently. I probably won't ever build a pond like this again unless I've got 30 plus acres where I can take that soil and clay and allocate it to a different stretch on my property. Unfortunately, there's not too many places you can put 40 truckloads of dirt on eight acres without making your property look like a landfill. Day number three. The pond is now double in size. It's incredible as to how quick they got to work on this project. I was pretty pleased despite the fact that it cost so much. Uh, I decided to fly the drone after the crew left just so I could, you know, get a lay of the land when there's no excavator digging out dirt. And as you can see, a lot of that existing water in the pond is starting to seep into the new pond bottom. And I don't know if you notice this, but that water is very clean. I'm very fortunate to be in an area where there's not too much sediment, which means any sort of pond water that is going to accumulate in my backyard is generally going to be clean. So once this pond is finished, we will have a pretty pristine body of water where we can actually see the fish from around and see the aquatic life thrive in this ecosystem. Day number four, the drone is up and the guys are cranking. We are getting very, very close to completing this project. The excavator dug out a lot of earth, but what it didn't do is make a seamless gradual slope into the pond. So that's where the dozer comes into play. While my drone was hovering over the bulldozer, I got a bit distracted and noticed this little turtle who had been enjoying my pond even prior to this construction. I don't have a name for this turtle yet, but I'm thinking Franklin. It seems very fitting. Franklin got spooked initially, but he decided to come back up, felt a little bit brave, and wanted to see what the drone was all about.
I then scurried over to one of the little creek arms where the water feeds into this pond, and I noticed, to my surprise, that there was a bass still alive from when I previously stocked it a year ago. And now I know it may seem like there's a lot of water in the pond right now, and enough, surely, for a bass to survive in, but what you have to consider is my pond was only a foot to two feet deep in the wintertime when the water was extremely low and we weren't getting any rain. So it's incredible to see that there is still bass in this pond thriving. To my presumption, I assumed that most of the largemouth in this pond had been deceased, picked apart by birds and raccoons and any other sort of critters that eat fish. So it was good to see at least one straggler, if not more. It really makes me wonder if there is more living in this pond than I had initially thought, just judging from the fact that we've already spotted a pretty decent sized bass. This fish was maybe, I don't know, two pounds, three pounds, it didn't look too skinny too. So there still must be some bait in there that they're eating, whether it be dragonflies, bluegill, possibly other bass, I don't know. The pads and the reeds look like they're doing pretty good as well. Uh, originally the pads were completely dead, but pads are fairly resilient. If you can control them, they are a decent element to an ecosystem. I will have to watch those pads and the growth of them later on down the road. They could take over the pond, but for now it creates a nice cover for bluegill and smaller bait fish to hide from those largemouth. And it also facilitates a bit of shade, especially in these hotter months in Texas. Over here too, you see a little bit of grass. This vegetation was present even before I bought the property and the original owner never stocked the pond, never did anything to it. Really, it was just kind of a drainage ditch for him. So it's interesting and it makes me curious to think where that vegetation came from and also what type of vegetation it is. I'm under the impression that vegetation helps keep that water clean during some of the rainier months here in Texas and I don't really want to do anything about it. I want to keep in the pond. Again, it creates nice structure and it also promotes O2, dissolved O2 in that pond. Was the excavator. Luckily the boys finished up the job yesterday because over well, the next couple of days we're gonna get weather like this which is good because we need this pond to fill up as fast as we can. She's all finished 100% complete. They uh, dug it out to probably about three quarters of an acre which is right around where I wanted it and uh, they graded it yesterday. They just kind of made the bank a little bit more uh, of a gradient slope opposed to something that's a straight drop off. It looks really nice. We've uh, Got a GoPro set up right there, just to see if we can get some time-lapse footage of this filling up a little bit. Surprisingly, it doesn't take too much water to fill up my pond, mainly because everything around me is clay, and clay is not very absorbent. Water will just slip right through the, the ground and into any sort of crevice or pond that is nearby. The good news is, and surprisingly, this pond won't take too long to fill up. It will, it will really only take a couple days of heavy rain that we're gonna have today to get this thing completely full. Let me wipe you guys down there. It is wet as all hell. So with this rain and maybe a couple other, other days of precipitation, it's a very good chance that this might fill up to at least half pool, which is very optimistic because the faster this fills up, the faster we can put fish in here and start managing it and uh, get back to the big bass factory. But it looks great. I'd throw the joint up right now, but I don't want it to break. She looks really sick. It's a little bit soggy out here. I'm actually great. It's like perfect timing. They just wrapped it up and the rain comes through. Can't ask for a better scenario. Anyway, I'm gonna get back inside where it's dry and warm, but I figured I'd show you guys what the pond looks like empty before it fills up quickly, because it will fill up quickly with how much clay is in this area. We could not have timed this project any better. Over the past couple days, when the guys were constructing the pond and excavating and grading it, it was completely dry. And as soon as the gear got loaded back on the trailer, the rain started to come. It was just so ideal. Following the afternoon rain, I threw the drone up just to see how much water had accumulated in the pond over a couple of hours, and it looks good. As you can see, it's holding a bit of water, and in theory, all we need is a couple more weeks of rain like that to get this pond to full pool. Now, there's still that ominous factor we may have a leak. Just because we expanded the pond doesn't mean that it's gonna hold more water. There could be a leak in that deeper part. Like I said previous in this video, just a bit of a callback, the guy that originally dug this pond out was not a part of the team that is here now. The guy that dug the pond out may have hit a bit of rock and rock is not good. It creates seepage. It ultimately will just be a never ending pit of water. No matter how much water fills up in there, there will still always be a slow or fast trick of water that is 
exiting your pond and going into the earth below. While we've done all this work and I've dumped all this money into this project, we still have many, many steps to go. There is a solution if this pond continues to have a bit of a leak. Bentonite is a solution. It's an all natural sealant. It's like a concrete almost. I don't really know how to explain it, but uh, we could add that to the pond. The only issue with that though, is we'd have to drain the pond and uh, sacrifice any sort of existing life that is currently dwelling in the backyard pond at the moment. So we'd have to drain it, put bentonite down, and bentonite would be a pretty sure way of making sure there'd be no more leaks, but the trade-off to that would be more money, more process of getting that water out, and then where to put that water. But I at least wanted to keep you all posted and updated as the backyard pond saga continues, and as we get closer to creating a backyard big bass factory. Drop a comment, let me know what you guys think we should do to the pond next. I think as of now, the main goal is to add a bit of structure, uh, throw some pea gravel down, some sand, any sort of substrate that's going to help fish spawn and reproduce in the future. Uh, also include maybe some laydowns, some cover. Right now the pond is fairly featureless. There's only reeds, some pads, and a bit of grass. I think some hard structure, maybe some riprap, some rock would not only make it look nice, but also help the fish in the pond thrive. This is the first pond that I've ever built. And as you may be able to tell, it's not going so well, but I'm not giving up, especially since you guys are so interested and curious as to how the pond build process continues. But I appreciate you guys watching today's video. Thank you so much for viewing. Be sure to give this video a like if you wanna see more pond builds and drop a comment, give me your input. Just say hello, say what's up, tell me how your day was, and I'll catch you on the next one. As always, folks, keep building ponds, never stop.